projects announced in the 2024 budget can begin right away. SME is confident on growth prospects of business this year. Good evening and salam Malaysia Madani. You're watching Malaysia Tonight. I'm Sahi Samshuddin. Projects mentioned in the budget 2024 can begin right away as the funds have already been disbursed to the respective ministries. According to Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, this is a significant improvement from past years when the funds were only disbursed after the first quarter. Similarly, one of the issues that we raised, uh, which is of course uh, highlighted by the Chief Secretary, is also to uh, ensure that projects announced uh, during the budget should not wait for like the first, the normal process of the first quarter. I mean, should start now, which means. Uh, since we have achieved uh, a record uh, <coughs> achievement in the 2023 assessment of uh, projects implemented, I think for 2024, we want this to be uh, implemented fast, which means they can proceed now uh, without having to wait the first quarter. Of Met after the Cabinet's two-day retreat in Cyberjaya, the Premier said the focus for this year would be on implementation of programmes and policies more effectively. On the water tariff, the Prime Minister said the decision to increase the water tariff was following the request of all states. He said the tariff adjustment was proposed during the meeting with the Menteri Basas and Chief Ministers. Sudah dijelaskan oleh semua pihak bahawa semua negeri meminta kita naikkan uh, dalam syarat uh, dengan Menteri Besar, uh, Ketua Menteri um, dan uh, ada negeri yang tidak naikkan selama 40 tahun lebih dia mereka mengusulkan dan Kerajaan Persekutuan setuju. In a related development, Selangor Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Amruddin Shari has unveiled the adjusted water tariffs for domestic and commercial users in the state from 1st February. He said the minimum charge for domestic users will be adjusted from six ringgit currently to six ringgit fifty cent. Commercial users as well as other non-domestic users, meanwhile, who use up to 35 cubic meters of water, will see the tariff raise from two ringgit sixty-two cents per cubic meter of water to two ringgit and seventy cents. He said that the move will affect 49 percent of users in Selangor. Yang pastinya kita cuba terbaik uh, state menggunakan uh, kompas dan juga menggunakan apa yang simpanan kita ada untuk mengurangkan kesan tersebut. Tetapi bagi mereka yang berkemampuan bagi kita uh, wajarlah mereka untuk membayar harga tertentu untuk uh, air mereka. In view of these increases, Datuk Sri Amruddin said the Selangor government will absorb the additional costs for over 1 million users who are currently enjoying free water supply. He said it will cost the state government 37.3 million ringgit a year compared to 31.8 million ringgit annually previously. He was met after completing the Selangor Digital School graduation ceremony today. The young di Petuan Agong, Al Sultan Abdullah Tudin Al Mustafa Billah Shah has decreed the Pahang government to prioritize the issue of environmental sustainability and should not be compromised in development planning. His Majesty said the state government, in its efforts to find sources of state revenue, should continue to preserve environmental treasures so that they will last for generations to come.
Al Sultan Abdullah said this in his royal address after the proclamation ceremony of Lipis as a national geopark at Taman Negara, Sungai Relau in Lipis today. Also present was Pahang Menteri Besar, Datuk Sri Wan Rosdi Wan Ismail and Deputy Minister of Natural Resources and Environmental Sustainability, Datuk Sri Huang Tiong Si. His Majesty also congratulated all parties involved in ensuring Lipis is recognised as the 11th National Geopark in Malaysia on 9th November last year. Coming up, strong lineup of launches, backlogged boost auto sector. Bursa Malaysia closed broadly weaker but was off its intraday low with decliners outnumbering gainers on selling pressure across the board amid the negative sentiment surrounding the market. At 5 p.m., the Bursa Malaysia KLCI fell 12.03 points to 1,479.18 from yesterday's close of 1,491.21. On the broader market, losers trounced gainers in 185 to 218. While 383 counters were unchanged, 766 untraded and 16 others suspended. Kenanga Research expects the automotive sector to experience a similar 2023 trend given an equally strong lineup of the launches this year. In a note today, the research house said the industry's earnings visibility is still strong, backed by a 200,000 unit booking backlog as at end December 2023, with more than half of it comprising new models. The research firm also projected a total industry volume of 710,000 units this year, slightly lower than the 740,000 units projected by the Malaysia Automotive Association, MAA. In the electric vehicle EV segment, excitement is building up with BYD SEAL and Tesla Model 3 launches and the expected introduction of the first locally made national EV in 2025. The positive sentiment is also supported by the affordability of vehicles underpinned by stable new car prices thanks to the deferment of new excise duty regulations and potentially cheaper higher purchase costs with the introduction of the reducing balance method in interest calculations and attractive new models. Meanwhile, in a separate note, RHB Research forecasts the total industry volume to be at 625,000 units in line with the 10-year average based on a lack of compelling factors for 2024 auto sales to book another high. RHB Research is maintaining a neutral call on the sector and will stay cautious on the 2024 outlook premised on a lack of catalyst to drive sales and earnings to a new high. Malaysia's small and medium enterprises SMEs view 2024 as a year of growth prospects despite concerns about rising costs and inflation. Employment Heroes SME sentiments report revealed it also found that 50% of SME leaders see Malaysia's economy performing well in the next 12 months with 18% believing the economy will be poor and 32% remaining, remaining cautious that it will be average. The survey which polled 540 business leaders across Malaysian SMEs in November-December 2023 found that an impressive 79% of respondents are confident about the gross prospects of their company. The report also discovered that 48% of respondents regard rising costs and inflation as their biggest challenge for the year. Furthermore, it highlighted that medium-sized businesses are struggling with staff upskilling and manpower shortages. Owing to factors such as higher salary expectations, a mismatch between industry needs and skills training, and a reported higher than average rate of brain drain. According to the survey, the top three biggest opportunities for Malaysia's SMEs in 2024 comprise digital transformation, artificial intelligence and automation 32%, global expansion and e-commerce 31%, and employee education and training 28%. 
Malaysia has earned 27.16 billion ringgit from rubber exports in 2023, with 70% coming from rubber gloves. The Malaysian Rubber Council, or MRC, in a statement today said Malaysian rubber goods are exported to over 190 countries, with the United States and the European Union as the top two export destinations. MRC said the strong global demand for sustainability continues to grow with consumers demanding environmentally and ethically sustainable products. Acknowledging the need for change, MRC held its inaugural Rubber ESG Conference 2004, inviting industry stakeholders, experts and leaders to promote, encourage and bolster the adoption of sustainability in the rubber industry. With the tagline, Navigating ESG for a Resilient Future of Malaysia's Rubber Industry, the conference explored how industry players and stakeholders harmonise sustainability efforts with ESG aspects, social compliance and resilient practices. Its chairman, Dato Sri Muhammad Suparadi, said the objective is to ensure long-term success while creating a positive impact on society and the environment. He said this involved investing in research for greener alternatives, implementing strategies to minimize waste and conserving energy, and if possible, to convert them to other byproducts. The Intellectual Property Corporation of Malaysia, My IPO, today launched the IPR Marketplace 2.0 portal, which provides access to intellectual property owners to expand their innovation markets. Its chairman, Dr. Mohamed Zuhan Mohamed, said it is hoped that this platform will encourage collaboration between local entrepreneurs and potential parties in the global market. This portal has been improved to enable intellectual property owners to interact directly as well as collaborate with parties interested in carrying out licensing, franchising as well as buying and selling of a listed intellectual property. This portal also provides intellectual property valuation or IP valuation information to those who need an assessment of their intellectual property based on the current market. Kita memberi ruang kepada seluruh rakyat Malaysia untuk terus mendaftarkan idea dan juga kreativiti mereka. Sebelum ini, mereka ada idea tetapi mereka tidak daftar sebab tidak ada value untuk mereka nak letak. Tetapi kalau mereka ada idea ini, mereka boleh melihat idea mereka berapa banyak, berapa tinggi nilai dia. He said the IP valuation has been recognised through the IP valuation training program organised by MyIPO in collaboration with the World Trades Institute to ensure holistic and quality intellectual property valuation. The Johor Singapore Special Economic Zone, JS, SEZ, is set to favour Malaysia in the long run as it will benefit from cross-border labour activities and investment flows. ASEAN Plus 3 Macroeconomic Research Office or AMRO Chief Economist Ho E. Kaur said the SEZ will be a game changer for Malaysia and Singapore as the two economies are closely linked and the SEZ will complement both. The Chief Economist said Singapore's savings and capital will benefit Malaysia through investment in Johor, boosting both economies in the long term. On 11 January, Malaysian Singapore Inc. a Memorandum of Understanding to work on the JSSEZ to strengthen economic connectivity between Johor and Singapore. The JSSEZ is expected to further boost trade between Johor and Singapore, which could flourish like the Chinese city of Shenzhen, a success story of a special economic zone linked to Hong Kong. It is also expected to improve the business ecosystem, both Iskandar Malaysia and Singapore. Among the sectors the zone is targeting are electronics, financial services, business-related services and healthcare. Singapore is the state's second largest foreign investor, contributing about 70% to Johor's total foreign direct investment in the manufacturing sector. ENP, O&M Services Sendirian Berat, EPOMS, is dedicated to enhancing collaboration with diverse stakeholders to foster the development of a highly competent workforce within the oil and gas industry in Malaysia. Its Chief Executive Officer Zulkarnain Ismail highlighted that in pursuit of this commitment, EPOMS' strategic partnership with Pahang Skills and University Technology Petronas Centre for Advanced and Professional Education CAPE for the establishment and execution of an oil and gas programme tailored to meet the industry's manpower requirements. The collaboration will involve the company taking the lead in creating new training modules to ensure seamless execution of the programme, encompassing both theoretical knowledge and practical application. 
As for Pahang Skills, it will design short-term programs, professional competency certificates and diplomas while the University Technology Petronas will play an important role in providing electronic training materials for the course through CAPE. The oil market is said to be in a comfortable and balanced position this year despite West Asia tensions amid a rising supply and slowing demand growth outlook. Executive Director of the International Energy Agency, Fatih Biro, said the Paris-based IEA is expecting a significant increase in oil production from the United States, Canada, Brazil and Guyana this year just as global oil demand growth slows. Attacks by the Houthis on ships in the Red Sea have forced many companies to divert cargoes around Africa, adding to journey times and costs. If we don't see any major geopolitical uh, surprises, I expect, in fact, this year a comfortable uh, oil market, more balanced oil market. Uh, currently, of course, there are some uh, issues related to transportation of oil, uh, which had a rather uh, limited impact on the prices. Production is not affected uh, at all, uh, but if uh, one or more than uh, one a major oil producing country uh, is directly involved in the conflict, this may well uh, give a, a, a upward pressure on the prices. The IEA expects world oil demand to grow by 1.1 million barrels per day in 2024. It expects non-OPEC supply growth to reach 1.2 million barrels per day next year. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, by comparison, sees demand growth of 2.25 million barrels per day in 2024. Bureau said the moderate oil prices would be good for economic growth in the context of high inflation rates. China is on a charge as it continues to be a global leader in the new energy vehicle and EV market with more breakthroughs in the development of fast charging batteries bringing greater convenience to consumers. According to the Chinese Association of Automobile Manufacturers, China's production and sales both exceeded 30 million vehicles last year, a record high while the country exported over 1.2 million new energy vehicles, a 77.6% increase from the previous year. Meanwhile, China's power battery technology patents currently account for 74% of the world's total as top Chinese firms continue to innovate in the sector. China's NEV development dates back some 20 years, with policies starting to come into effect around 2009 and the country's global presence already being felt by 2016. The firm sees China's growth and development in the industry as the right pieces coming together. All signs suggest that China's NEV producers and complementary industries are all geared up and ready to pave way for a greener, smarter and more efficient future. Samsung Electronics unveiled its latest premium smartphones that will have multiple AI functions such as simultaneous translation of foreign language phone calls in the company's latest push to challenge Apple. The release comes after news that Apple topped Samsung in 2023 smartphone shipments, dethroning Samsung for the first time since 2010 as demand for premium devices outpaces market growth. In response, Samsung is offering various artificial intelligence functions in its premium Galaxy S24 models as part of its strategy to attract buyers. The new phones will have two-way voice translation in real time of a live phone call conducted in two different languages, which the company said the Galaxy S24 series is the first ever smartphone to offer. Samsung also announced that its new Galaxy S24 will deploy Google's generative artificial intelligence technology. The Google deal will make Samsung one of the first companies to test Gemini Ultra, the search engine giant's most capable and largest large language model. Everybody's talking about generative AI, but Samsung actually started to deliver some things that I think people are going to find very interesting. You know, circle to search, which is a Google thing, first showing up on these Samsung phones, reflects the partnership that these companies have. And then the ability to do a live translation uh, of a phone call, of a text exchange. I mean, this is the kind of sci-fi futuristic stuff people have been hoping for with AI for quite some time, but now it's finally here. So I think I think that's the kind of thing that people are going to really be knocked out by. The Galaxy S24 series will be sold starting 31st January. 
A federal appeals court ordered Apple to halt U.S. sales of its latest smartwatch models as part of a patent feud with health company Massimo. The ban on certain Apple smartwatch models come into effect Thursday as the iPhone juggernaut is ordered to await the outcome of its appeal. Massimo, based in Southern California, filed a complaint to the U.S. International Trade Commission, ITC, which decided in October to halt imports of the Apple Watch models over a patented technology for detecting blood oxygen levels. Massimo contends invented the technology and that Apple poached key employees to win access to the know-how. But the iPhone maker contends that the ITC finding was in error and should be reversed and appealed the decision in the Federal Appeals Court. The wait for that decision could reportedly last a year or more. Massimo Chief Executive Joe Chiani called the decision to allow the ban to be implemented a victory for the US patent system that shows even powerful companies such as Apple must respect intellectual property rights. Pakistan launches retaliatory strike into Iran. That and more coming up in our foreign segment. Singapore's former transport minister, S. Iswaran, has been charged in court for graft in one of the most high-profile graft cases involving a minister in the Asian financial hub in decades. In his resignation letter published by the Prime Minister's office, Iswaran said he rejected the charges and will focus on clearing his name. If convicted of corruption, he could be fined up 100,000 Singapore dollars or face seven years in prison. The local news outlet reported that Iswaran was charged in court today with multiple offences including corruption and obtaining valuables as a public servant months after a probe into him was made public. He pleaded not guilty to 27 charges in all, two of corruption under the Prevention of Corruption Act, one of obstructing justice and 24 of obtaining valuables as a public servant under the penal code. Pakistan has carried out strikes against militant targets in Iran today, with Tehran reporting a death toll of nine civilians after staging its own air raid in Pakistan earlier this week. The cross-border attacks add to multiple crises across the West Asia. This morning, Pakistan undertook a series of highly coordinated and specifically targeted precision military strikes against terrorist hideouts in Sistano Baluchistan province of Iran. A number of terrorists were killed during the intelligence-based operation codenamed Markbar Sarmachar. She said the action was taken in line of credible intelligence of impeding large-scale terrorist activities. Pakistan caretaker Prime Minister Anwar Ulhaq Kakar will cut short his visit to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland in view of the ongoing developments. Iran condemned the strikes and summoned Pakistan's charge the affair to protest and request an explanation from the Pakistani government. Coming up in sports, Alcaraz marches on at Australian Open as Switek roars back. The Badminton Association of Malaysia BAM are targeting the national team to reach at least the semi-finals of next month's Badminton Asia Team Championship BATC to clinch an automatic spot in the prestigious Thomas Cup and Uber Cup finals in April. BAM Secretary General Datuk Kanigo said they will let the coaching team led by Academy Badminton Malaysia Coaching Director Rexy Mainaki decide on the player lineup. He is confident they will name the strongest team for the BATC 2024 to be held at the Setia City Convention Centre in Shah Alam from 13 to 18 February. Seperti yang saya katakan tadi, saya mas, kami masih menunggu lah, okay? Uh, sebab kita ada sampai 26 hari bulan Januari untuk membuat pendaftaran pemain, so uh, mungkin uh, pengarah kejurulatihan masih memerlukan masa untuk membuat keputusan utama. 
the BATC 2024 will see 15 teams vying for a top four finish to confirm their places in the Thomas Cup finals. They are defending champions Malaysia, China, Indonesia, Japan, India, Taiwan, Thailand, South Korea, Hong Kong, Singapore, United Arab Emirates, UAE, Kazakhstan, Saudi Arabia, Myanmar and Brunei. In the 2022 BATC, Malaysia clinched their maiden men's team title and shared third spot with Japan in the women's team event. In tennis, second seed Carlos Alcaraz endured a tricky test before finding his groove to overcome Italian Lorenzo Sonego 6-4, 6-7, 6-3, 7-6 at the Australian Open and make the third round on a day of epic battles. The two-time major champion who struck 43 winners on Rod Laver Arena found himself all square at one set apiece despite not facing any break points in the first two sets. But he brushed off the loss of the second set, breaking early in the third set and came out on top in the fourth set tie break in windy conditions. Alcaraz will meet Chinese wildcard Shang Ju Cheng next as he ramps up his drive towards a maiden title in Melbourne. Alcaraz, who missed the 2023 Australian Open due to injury, is aiming to become the third man in the Open era to win three Grand Slams before the age of 21 after John Bock and Mats Wallander. He also had the chance to supplant Novak Djokovic as world number one. Earlier, Polish women's world number one Iga Swiatek was up a set in a break in her second round match against Daniel Collins before faltering badly and slipping to a 4-1 deficit in the deciding set. But just as she appeared to be heading home, she reeled off five straight games to win 6-4, 3-6, 6-4 and extend her winning run to 18 matches. The four-time Grand Slam champion will face unseeded Czech with player Linda Noskova next. 76 minutes tanpa henti, 76 minutes non-stop. Transparent and concise. Paparan komprehensif, ringkas dan padat. Saksikan Kanta 744, 744 malam. Berita perdana 8 malam. Malaysia tonight, 8.30pm. And that concludes this edition of Malaysia Tonight. In our top story, projects announced in the 2024 budget can begin right away. Till then, I'm Sari Samshidin. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Thanks for watching and have a good night.